and welcome back to Avocet Math. In this video we're going to delve into the linear two-variable Diophantine equation. Uh, the linear two-variable Diophantine equation is not factorable and so uh, this equation type does not lend itself to the methods that we described in uh, previous videos so we're going to develop a few new methods to attack this specific uh, type of equation. So let's jump right in with a uh, prototype example equation. Say 3x plus 7y equals 41. Now in the follow-on PDF uh, document uh, it'll handle this equation with uh, variables a, b, and c but for the purpose of this explanation and, and the work that I'll be doing I'll just be using this example equation and it'll be pretty clear from this example how to extend uh, these methods to any equation with any variables for the coefficients for x, y, and the constant term on the right. So uh, let's jump right into this one. The first step that we need to uh, to uh, accomplish in this uh, solution is to do the following. We need to decide if this number on the right side of the equation is a uh, multiple of uh, the greatest common divisor of uh, 3 and 7. So in, case, in our case here, uh, the greatest common divisor in 3 and 7 is in fact 1. So this, uh, this condition is certainly met. Uh, 41 is certainly a multiple of 1, uh, but uh, you know, in, in other cases that, that may not be satisfied. So uh, the answer to this question, of course, can come out in two possible ways. The answer could be no, in which case we can uh, conclude that there are no solutions to this uh, Diophantine equation in uh, the set of uh, all integers, positive and negative. And if the uh, answer to this uh, condition question is yes, then we can conclude that there are in fact an infinite number of solutions in all integers z for, for this equation. And uh, one way to sort of see why this condition comes about is to consider uh, the example where the coefficient for x is say 4 and the coefficient for y is say 6. So those are both two even numbers and their greatest common divisor of say 4 and 6 would then be 2. And we can see basically on the left side of this equation because we have coefficients that are both even that this sum will always be an even number. And if again for example we put an odd number to the right side of this equation then that would be a case in which the 41 would not be a multiple of the greatest common divisor of say 4 and 6. And so this would basically lead to the conclusion that there are no solutions in Z. And that comes, that's uh, pretty obvious from the, from the observation that uh, the uh, 4 times X plus the 6 times Y would always be an even number. And there's no way to add two even numbers to, uh, to form the sum uh, into an odd number. And so that's just sort of a hint as to where this uh, criteria comes from. So for our example case, uh, we do have... Uh, the constant term equal to a multiple of the greatest common divisor. So we're basically in the yes branch and we do know that we have an infinite number of solutions in Z. And so now the next steps are to, to find those and characterize that set of infinite solutions. So uh, what we'd like to use is basically a two-step process and uh, step one is to consider the equation where we make the constant term zero. So that's 3x plus 7y is equal to zero and for this first equation what we do is we seek to find the infinite solutions to that equation uh, in x y all elements again of uh, all positive all positive and negative integers z and the second step is to consider the full equation 2x plus 7y equal 41 but for this second equation now we only seek to find the one solution in uh, x, y, again, just elements of z. And the, the reason why we do this is because uh, in this first step, we're basically finding a set of x, y that I'd like to call x hat and x, y. And that'll basically form an infinite set of x and y. And in this second set of equations, or second equation, we're only going to find one solution in x and y. So I'll call that x prime and y prime. 
Once we form and uh, found the, the set, the infinite set of x hat and y hat, and the single solution in x prime and y prime, we can then do a very simple step, and that is we can add these two equations to form our final equation, which in this case is uh, 3x prime plus uh, x hat and 7y prime plus y hat equals 41. And we'll basically develop expressions for determining the set of x hat and y hat and the single solution y prime, x prime, excuse me, and y prime. And what we realize once we've added these two solutions together, we will have formed, in essence, the full value of x and the full value of y, uh, which will describe the full solution set to our original equation. So that's basically an outline to how we'll proceed. And so in the next video, we're going to basically do step one and step two and form the final uh, solution set that we seek. So come and join us for that next video and see you then.